Hello, YouTube. This is Umozo3. I think I only have about four lessons in Java planned left, okay? And then in this lesson, we're going to be talking about something called stacks, okay? So we're going to be talking about another type of data structure, right? We've already learned arrays and array lists, and now more recently linked lists, okay? In this lesson, we're going to be talking about a fourth option. So what I wanted to, to review is the egg class. Remember, we created this egg class, and we have these two instance variables, A and B, which get assigned to the parameters at the time the instance of the class is created, right? So egg of A and B just assigns A and B instance variables. And then we can pump A and B optionally, so that would just add one to the value of either of those two instance variables. And then the resolve instance method returns the result of A minus B. And then what we do is we say that for any class that implements the comparable interface, this is pretty critical. Because in doing this, this allows us to basically sort an array list or a linked list of uh, objects of this type. So what we can do is if we go ahead and implement this compare to method, if we go ahead and define this compare to method, it accepts an object. And then what we do is we go ahead and convert that object to, um, to an object of the particular class type. So we would say egg y equals egg of z if we were passing in some general object Z because the goal is to compare two eggs and we would look at the resolve method. And so we were basically talking about how we would do the computation A minus B for the current instance as well, for the ins as, well as for the instance that's being passed in and do that computation. And this would allow us to basically sort an array list or a linked list. And we can use collections.sort of array list or collections.sort of linked list. And we're gonna talk about that in this video. But what I also added is a two string method. And basically what it says here is return egg tester dot print egg of this. Okay, so basically what we have to do is we have to understand what this means. So basically egg tester is a class and egg tester is another class that we created and talked about in another video. And we basically said we were gonna use it to test eggs, right? And create array lists and linked lists of egg objects. And so that's what we did in the previous few videos. And so what we're going to do is we're going to think about going into the egg tester class and figuring out essentially what print egg of this would do. So presumably print egg is going to be a static method. And what does it accept? It accepts this. So basically what, what two string is, two, remember two string is an instance method. So two string applies on a particular instance. It's about, partic it's about printing an instance of a class. And so this refers to the instance. So basically this is the current egg instance that we are referring to, right? So it's like if we were talking about pump B, we were saying this dot B, um, you know, increment, you know, the value of B for the current instance by one. Okay, so this is saying egg tester dot print egg of this. So presumably print egg is a static method in the egg tester class that accepts an instance of an egg, right? It accepts an egg object and it returns a string, right? Because the two string method has to return a string. So therefore, if we're returning the result of the print egg method, you know, the print egg would have to return a string. And it says this egg has a, has a resolution of and concatenates it with the results of the resolve method for the particular instance of the egg class that we passed in to the print egg function. So hopefully that makes sense to you, but we would say this egg has a resolution of, and then the result of the resolve method for whatever that instance of the egg class was. So hopefully that makes sense to you. But what we have to do in order to use array lists and linked lists in, in the collections class is import the right classes, right? So we would say import array list if you want to create and use an array list. Import linked list if you want to create and use a linked list. Import collections if you want to sort an array list or linked list or find the minimum or maximum element. Okay, and then we're also going to review the iterators and then we're going to talk about stacks in this video. So then uh, let's see. So then that's what we talked about, the compare to method, right? And that's how we defined, we defined it by the resolve method in our egg class. So hopefully that's clear to you. But we also have the collections class and then we can also look at how we would compare two integers, right? So what we can do is we can go ahead and create a linked list of integer objects. So we can say linked list of type integer and then we can say my nums equals new linked list of type integer, okay? And then what we can do is go ahead and add some uh, integers, right? So we can say integer A uh, equals new integer of four, um, B equals new integer of three, 
And one of the things we talked about in the previous video is that there are two types of remove methods for array lists and linked lists. And one of them, you know, accepts an int index position. And the other one accepts, you know, one of the objects that, that you're actually trying to remove. So the question is, if you had integer objects and you said, um, you know, if you said my nums dot remove of zero after after adding these five objects to your linked list, um, would it remove the element at index position zero, or would it actually remove the object zero here at e? So what we would do is we would say my nums dot add of a, and then we would say my nums dot add of b. So basically what we're doing right now is we're, we're reviewing the functionality of the linked list class. And we said that basically linked list class has a lot of the same methods as the array list class does. So this is sort of also a review of the array list class. But what we would do is we would add these five things. And then what if we said something like, um, what if we said my nums? So what if we said my nums dot remove of one? And the question is, would it remove D? or would it remove B, right? So, because this is the element, this is the element at index position one, and then this element refers to the number one, right? It would hold the integer that wraps the number one, right? And so the question is, if you said something like, what we're gonna do is we're gonna review iterators in this video. So what we would do, remember, in order to use an iterator, and I wanna basically, so the goal now, the goal is to iterate through the linked list and print the integer um, objects. So print the int value, print the int values wrapped by these integer objects. So that's the goal. And in the previous video, we talked about the iterator. Um, we talked about the iterator class just briefly. So what we're gonna do is remember, we have to say import java.util.iterator. And so what we can do is we can go to iterator java API. And I think we pulled this up in the previous video. But what we would do is we would go ahead and look at this. So then we would say an iterate, we, you would iterate over a collection, okay? And so basically there are three methods that we're gonna be talking about and reviewing in this video. And then hopefully we'll have enough time to also talk about something else called stacks, okay? But has next and next and remove. And the question is how do you create an iterator? And the answer is to use basically a method from the list interface, okay? And so basically what I was talking about is a list class in the previous video but list is actually an interface, okay? And it has an iterator method. And so this iterator method, it returns an iterator over the elements in the list in proper sequence. And so what you would do is you would basically go ahead and call that method and when it, it would create an iterator object. And that's what we have to go ahead and do for a particular array list or linked list. So then I think I, what did I do? I had some, so what you would do is you would import the iterator class you create an iterator object. So you could say something like iterator integer of read, uh, you know, read nums, you can call it something, equals numbers dot iterator, where numbers is an array list or linked list of that particular type. So if you're talking about integer objects, then numbers would have to be an array list or linked list of integer objects, right? So the iterator type has to be the same as the linked list or, or, or array list type. And then you would use a while loop or possibly a for loop with the has next method on the iterator to see if another element exists. So this is a this is an instance method that we talked about, but what you would do is you would basically say iterator, and then we have to have of type integer, right? Because we're working with integer objects in this video, but you would say um, go through or something. You would just basically be talking about an iterator. And then you could say my nums dot iterator. So that's so iterator, iterator is an instance method that is called you know, on an array list or linked list. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. I'm just gonna say AL. Okay, so hopefully that makes sense to you. But what you would do now is you would say something like while go through dot has next. Okay, so you'd use the has next method applied on the particular instance of the iterator class. So you would say while go through dot has next, right? And then you could use a for loop if you really wanted to. You could have said for int w equals zero semicolon go through dot has next semicolon w plus plus, right? You could do something useless with the w variable, but this is the Boolean that you would have to feed into the for loop. This is the Boolean that the for loop would be checking. But what we would do now is we would say system dot out dot print ln of go through dot next. Okay, so basically the next would go ahead and um, basically return the next element in the array list or linked list.
And so I think that's what I set up here. But what you would do is you would go ahead and have use a while loop with the has next method on the iterator to see if another element exists. And then if it does, use the next method on the iterator to return the next element in the array list or linked list, okay? And then what we're also gonna do is we're gonna talk about the remove method in this video. So if you'd like, you can use the remove method on the iterator to remove whatever element you just called next on from the list, okay? But you can only do this, you can only do this once um, for each time you call next. So then this is something that we're gonna talk about. So then, th so what we're gonna do is we wanna basically figure out what integers are gonna figure, are gonna be printed here. So the dot next here refers to an integer object. So in order to get the int value of it, we would say go through dot next, that refers to the integer objects, right? Within the array list or linked list here within a linked list. But what we would do then is call the int value. Cause remember when we were talking about wrapper classes, that int value would return the int that the integer object is wrapping. Okay, and so we just wanna see the next element. We're just gonna iterate through them and we use an iterator object to do that. And we get four, two, one, zero. So it removes the element at index position one and not the one. But if you wanted to remove the one, you would say my nums dot remove of integer dot value of and then pass in the one. And then what you do is you can go ahead and iterate through them as you can go ahead and see that instead now you get 4320. So now the one is removed rather than the element at index position one. So hopefully that's clear to you. You would use the integer dot value of method. I think we talked about that in the previous video. But what you can do is there's also a remove method. So what I set up here is if you'd like, you can use the void remove method on the iterator to remove whatever element you just called next on from the list, okay, from the array list or linked list that you created the iterator based on, okay? But you can only do this once for each time you call next. So then what we're gonna do is every time we print the int value that that particular integer object is wrapping, what we could do is we could actually say go through dot next. So, that, so basically what this does is it removes the current element from the linked list. So from the linked list that, that it was based on. And then what we would do is we would basically go ahead and verify that the linked list is empty at the end. So we could say system.out.println of my nums dot is empty. And the goal is for this to be true if, if what we keep doing is removing the element. So we would say go through dot remove, right? And we can call remove once each time we call next. So then if we go ahead and compile it and run it, what this would do is it would remove the element from the linked list, from the array list. So it actually modifies the list that the iterator object is based on. And the goal is for us to go ahead and get true for the list being empty at the end. So hopefully that makes sense to you and the size of it would be zero. What we're gonna do in this video is we're gonna talk about stacks. So stacks is another type of data structure. It's kind of like an array list or linked list. But now remember with array lists, we said elements are based on index positions. With a linked list, elements are based on basically a value and then another node, another element that they point to, you know, the next element in the linked list. It's like sausage links. So it's like thinking about objects being linked together. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna think about stacks in this video. And I think it would be helpful to look at the Wikipedia article. So in computer science, a stack is an abstract data type that serves as a collection of elements with two principal operations. So what you would do is you could either add an element to the collection or remove the most recently added element that was not yet removed, okay? So this is a structure called last in first out. And it's actually really helpful to just think about a stack of plates like at a dinner table. But you would think about, you know, the last um, plate that you put in is the first one that, gonna, that is gonna be removed from the stack. You know, and oppositely, the first one that you put onto the stack is the last one that's gonna come out. So it's just like a data structure. And what we're gonna do is we would just think about these two operations. So we're gonna think about adding objects, right? Integer objects, but not ints. Boolean objects, but not primitive Booleans, right? Or you could also think about adding person objects or you know, string objects or you know, passport objects, whatever type of class you wanna create and instances of that class, you can go ahead and create a stack of them. So it says considered as a linear data structure, the push and pop operations occur only at one end of the structure, right? Recur at the top of the stack. So you can think about the operations occurring at the top, right? It would be pretty dumb to try to remove an element from the bottom of the stack 
and you would probably get hurt or there would be damage or something, right? You would remove it from the top. And we're talking about these push and pop operations. So what we're gonna do is we could go ahead and look also at the documentation for this briefly, but I wanna have enough time to demonstrate the method to you. So what we could do is we could say stack Java API, right? Stack Java API, so we only have five minutes, unfortunately. But what we could do is we could say stack Okay, so the stack class represents last in first out stack of objects. Okay, and it's basically a subclass of vector. So there's also a class called vector in Java. And when you ever uh, code in C++, you hear people talk about vectors a lot. But anyway, we're just going to think about a few methods here. So we're going to think about the search method and the push and pop and then figure out whether or not the stack is empty. Okay, but you can create an empty stack. You know, this is just a default constructor. You don't pass in anything. But this is what we're going to do in this video. So basically what I want to show you is, uh, let's see. So then the notes here, uh, where did I put this? So then essentially, we're going to import java.util.stack. That's the first thing you have to do is you have to import java.util.stack if you want to create and use a stack. So I showed that right here at the top. So it has to be at the top before you even define the class that you're you know, working in. And then what we're going to do is we're going to create a stack. So we're going to say stack. So here's what we're going to do in order to create a stack. So we're gonna say basically, we're gonna say stack, and then let's do it with strings. So we can say stack of type string, and then, or actually let's do it with eggs. So we can say stack of type eggs, and then we can say uh, my eggs, right? So you can think about eggs being stacked on top of each other, essentially. And that would be sort of a bad idea, but it's just to demonstrate the points, to demonstrate this new data structure. And then you would say new stack of type egg. Okay, and then what you could do is basically what we wanna understand here is if you say, plate of words dot empty this is a boolean method that returns true if and only if the stack of empty is empty and so this would be this would be um empty at the beginning so what we're going to do is we would say system dot out dot print ln of my of uh, my eggs dot empty not is empty just empty okay and that would return true okay and so that's what we would want to see printed on the console and then what we would do is we would basically say um Let's see, I had a typo here, but plate of words stop push of X pushes X onto the top of the stack. Okay, and so you could push a new egg onto the top of the stack. So what if you said egg E1 equals new egg, and then remember you have to pass in two ints. Okay, and you can basically say my eggs dot push of E1. Okay, and so you basically put E1 onto the bottom of the stack, right? And then basically you could do that with a couple other ones. So you could say um, egg two equals new egg, and then we could do 15 and 11. And then we could say egg three equals new egg um, of 18 and 10. And then we could say egg uh, E4 equals new egg of 20 and eight. So hopefully that's clear to you. And then we could go ahead and push those eggs onto the top of the stack, right? So every time you can just think about E1 is gonna go on top of E2. And then after that, E3 is gonna go on, or E2 is gonna go on top of E1, right? And then E3 is gonna go on top of E2, right? And then this would be a dangerous idea in real life that you would just think about a stack of eggs, right? And you just keep pushing one on top of the other. And then what you could do is you would go ahead and wanna look at the next method here. So the next method says that the peak method would return the top of the stack without removing it, okay? But the pop would return and remove the top elements. So now what you could do in order to iterate through the stack, if you wanted to go through the elements of the stack and just basically look at the top of the element but remove it each time, what you would do is you would use the pop method, okay? And that's what that would return and remove the element at the same time. And that's what we could basically do one at a time, okay, through the list, okay? So then what we would do is we would say, while it's not the case that my eggs is empty, what we could do is we could say system.out.println of my eggs dot pop. So what, what this does is it returns and removes the top element from the stack. And so what we would wanna do is we would wanna see the two string method of each of these egg objects. And remember at the beginning of the video, we said that the two string method calls the print egg method in this class. So it would print, you know, the result of the resolve method for that particular egg. So it would just be the difference of nine and eight or the difference of 15 and 11. But hopefully this demonstrates some of the methods of the stack class to you and we can review them in the next video. But I just wanna make sure that this works. This will be this resolution as an egg of 12, eight, four, and one, because the first, the first egg that came in had a resolution of one, right? Nine minus eight is one. And that's the principle of a stack 
it's like a stack of plates. So hopefully that's clear to you, but we'll talk more about this data structure in the next video. From UMOS03, thanks for watching and please subscribe.